Okie dokie, I'm driving. And that's not very correct to be filming myself and driving, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a vlog. Uh, these two homeless guys at the park, I wish I had money. I would straight up, I would go, I would buy these guys, I'm sure they could plug it in somewhere. Uh, Nico uh, DRL X220, that kid's toy, because they were asking me about my setup. So my setup is uh, right now, my mainstay is this Ishin Racer 250 Pro. The Ishin Racer 250 standard is, uh, is an H-frame. This is a true X. It has uh, slightly smaller motors, so this is definitely a, a power upgrade. And it's primarily, the one I've got it is a 3S copper. I mean, I tried to run it on 4S and it broke everything. All the ESCs went out, and I think they're supposed to run on 4S, but they just didn't do it. So 4S is for sale. But, uh, you know, this quadcopter, it catches a lot of flack within the, uh, the FPV community, first person view. So the thing about it is, is that it's not that high performance. It's pretty good, but you know, performance is, uh, get, it's, it's a lot, a lot more than what this has to offer in a few ways. Uh, this receiver, you know, I don't get the best range out of this setup. Uh, one problem is, is that I just have my antennas in the belly. Um, but another thing is, is that the protocol for the Fly Sky protocol, uh, it doesn't do that well with interference and I'm flying in a city. So, I mean, the radio wave that the transmitter sends should make it anywhere, but I don't get the range that people with the uh, FR Sky stuff do. And I guess they have a little bit of delay, maybe it's not really noticeable, but what they have is a much more modern protocol designed to get the information through a more difficult signal environment than this older protocol. More simpler protocol, uh, lower latency protocol, but still less capable in a noise environment. But uh, I've been flying that thing for a few months now. My dad gave it to me. Hi, dad. Uh, and I just couldn't have had a better life, you know? since I gotten it. And, and part of it's the True X. The True X is a very, it's just excellent. It's amazing. If you started out on an H-frame and you've never flown a True X and then you switch to a True X, uh, it's much more intuitive. It feels more natural. It's just more logical in your mind about how pitch and rotation, you know, and how the copter moves, it just seems to feel more correct. My other part of my setup is uh, I've got a screen taped to my transmitter and I don't use goggles. Now everybody's on the goggles and everybody's all about the goggles, but I do not use the goggles. I've never used goggles. I don't regret never using goggles. In fact, today with these guys walked up to me, you know, there was uh, two good examples. One, my face is out. I can see them, they can see me. I can keep flying and still see, you know, and and then at, at the same time, you know, he could walk up and, and be like, oh, and he could see what I was doing and, and understand that. And just in general, having the screen, it, it lends you a lot of capability that having goggles that are connected to your face and you can't take them off while in flight. I mean, you could practice that, but it'd be much harder. You know, just being able to look away from the screen, look at the screen, look away from the screen, look at the screen. That alone is, especially because I'm a park flyer, you know, I don't ever go to a track or compete in any contests. You know, that's huge. And for a casual pilot that's just there to goof around, the problems that a screen offers, like the glare of the sun, you can usually overcome it because you can't go stand in the shade for the most part. I mean, I, 
uh, there's been a few times when I couldn't get into the shade and then I was like out in the direct sunlight trying to look at a screen, but for the most part, you can find a way to, to see uh, without wearing goggles squished to your face. So, I, I, and another thing is, is goggles, goggles are a barrier to entry in a big way. I mean, they are very expensive. Uh, you have to learn more about them than you do have to learn about a screen. Uh, they're more fragile. They, they, just everything about them is a little bit harder than a screen, except for how you're going to hold it. So, where goggles make a big win is that you don't have to hold them they hang on your face. But this duct tape is amazing. Duct tape is the most amazing thing and it's worked for me from before I ever started using uh, full-on drones. You know, when I was flying toy quadcopters, I used duct tape to create a veil to hold my screen. And everything has been magnificent. So, you know, the, the Razer 250 class of plastic arm drone. I'm gonna know later more if I keep flying. How their performance holds up. How their, how their ease of use and performance is because the plastic arms dampen vibration. So, one issue with the more higher performance carbon fiber frames is that they get a lot of problems from vibration and you have to soft mount your flight controller and your motors and you have to put other forms of dampening into the quadcopter in order to allow the flight controller to have easy control uh, if you don't have that stuff it gets to be a higher tech machine just to get working on a fundamental basis and with these plastic arms they do everything I'm sure I mean my quadcopter has a nice wide tuning window and when I had the regular Racer 250 I found that I tuned into a manageable tune and I could go fly and there was a lot of variation in the numbers that I could put into the pids to get something that flew just fine and I've never used anything but clean flight defaults I mean I've experimented with raising the P gain on other quadcopters but the defaults on clean flight fly all the way good. I mean, there's there's no reason for me to change anything. I just don't know enough about performance to go and think that I could do better. I mean, I played around a little bit and I found a more solid uh, position, you know, where it hold its attitude definitely much more solidly but you sacrifice a lot of speed and I just I feel like this quadcopter is so average and it meets so many standards that I I mean the defaults must just be designed for this quadcopter I couldn't so the plastic arms they break and I, I break them I break them a lot but you'll notice that I only have one uh, change to motor and it probably broke from crashing but I also would fly in the rain and I broke a few ESC's and it's actually it's this arm that I keep breaking ESC's on and so it might be a bad ESC that broke the motor because I smoked the motor a few times where actually smoke was coming out of it and then I continued to use it and it would work okay after I fixed the ESC and and then eventually the motor was the problem and changing the motor fixed it so the plastic arms they break but 
I almost want to say that's on purpose because, you know, I'm pretty sure people are buying a lot more motors than I am. And I'm buying arms that are four arms for five dollars. And it's a couple of screws and three little solder joints to change a motor. And you don't have to do any soldering on most carbon fiber frames to change the motor because this particular arm, the wires go through the arm in a way that you do have to. Well, that's a little bit inconvenient, but uh, so you do have to solder it all to change the arm unless you're gonna change the motor. But it's not that inconvenient. And I, my dad gave me a, a GP, you know, a, a, a little AA powered uh, soldering iron and it, it does the job so for for very little you know upfront investment I guess you could get to feel changing these arms four arms for five dollars I only break the front two mostly a motor this motor these cheap motors uh, they these stock motors I think are like thirteen dollars each at, at Banggood but they're kind of elite you can get a good motor that's ten dollars and really that's like eight dollars so but eight dollars for one big crash and the thing is is the arms don't have to necessarily break for their soft plasticky uh you know qualities to save the motor i mean the motor if the arm doesn't give at all a lot more of the pressure of the impact is going to transfer through the motor. I mean, it's gonna be holding the motor very firmly and smash it into whatever's going on. So your motor has to be pretty hardcore in order to survive a crash on a high performance carbon fiber frame that's, you know, maybe an acro frame or something like that. That is not true with this. I mean, I've smashed this thing all apart and the arm crumbles, but the motors don't really take any damage. I have a carbon fiber frame, and I found that if I used inexpensive motors on the carbon fiber frame, that the shafts would dent very easily, and that doesn't happen on this frame. Uh, the shafts don't, I mean, I bend the props, I smash, I hit the props all the time, the props break, they smash, they bend and my shafts aren't bending and I, I really think what's going on is that with the carbon fiber frame the motor is much more firmly held in place so that if you bend your prop with an inexpensive motor you might be bending your shaft right away I mean it just doesn't take really any crashes with a hardcore carbon fiber frame to bend the shaft this is not true with this frame uh, another thing about carbon fiber frames is that the vibration vibrates it apart a lot more than these plastics. So even though the flight performance is managing itself, you know, beta flight, clean flight, they have all these filters now, everything is running really smoothly and handling lots of vibration. Uh, you gotta tighten your screws a lot more, everything shakes itself apart. And sometimes I lose a screw with this thing, but nothing like I was doing with my carbon fiber frame. So, you know, whatever the case may be in durability and uh, speed, you know, capability, but I'm just not gonna fly 80, 90, 100 miles an hour in the places that I go fly because I'm a beginner and I'm just never gonna fly 80, 100 miles an hour where I'm at. I mean, I'm getting up to 30 miles an hour and that's, that's really, that's too fast because uh, it's okay, but I can't just do it like that. I have to be really aware of my surroundings and it's not every time that I go to that place because there's people that are, if I fly 10 to 20 miles an hour around my trees that I like to fly, everybody can be there and they are not in any danger of being hit. But if I start getting up to 30 miles an hour, now there can't be the people who are there, you know. There's about one run that I can make, which is flying away from everybody, and 
and really there's people who might be over there so I have to really be careful and make sure that I'm paying attention to who's going all over the place because kids get on wheels or you know and there's a drone and they want to go see it or or I don't see somebody going over to take a piss and they wander over there and I just never caught it you know so if I keep my speed down then I need a much smaller bubble of safety where there's not somebody there to fly. If I start getting up to higher speeds, then I gotta, first of all, if I crash, I break for sure, I break everything, it's way more expensive. Uh, second of all, it's more expensive to even go fly because I have to go to a different place that's harder to go to and, and then pretty soon there's gonna be pilots everywhere and I'll, I'll have to go and time is money, you know, and if I go and if I have, you know, my eight batteries that are good and a couple of junkers, and I go to a place where there's no other pilots, then I can go there and I can leave immediately. And I can fly and I can be out and I can get the most out of my day. If there's pilots everywhere and we got video channels and you know taking up all the space and they're flying a pack in one minute and then they want to take their turn and then it's gonna take me hours to fly, you know, 30 minutes, you know, of total flight time at my humble mellow pace and they're gonna be standing all over the places that I want to fly my drone because I don't, you know, want to fly the gates out in the open. I want to fly around the trees, and I don't know. There's just a million reasons why I feel that actually this is the most I can get out of a drone right now. I mean, I don't even know what some of these drones are like and people say no buy this one but it's all the way out of my budget you know and this one I may have never bought it but my dad gave it to me but actually you know I can build something like this for for cheap and I just can't believe it you know like it's amazing to me so anyways that's my video because it's way too long 